This video classroom lesson is sponsored by Transmission Bench. Visit the transmissionbench.com store for the deluxe super kit, other parts, and even the video classroom lessons used during this project. Hi, and welcome back. This is AODE 4R70W class, part one, lesson one. I want to begin with a little inspiration. In the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness, actor Will Smith plays a homeless salesman and single parent pursuing a goal. Against incredible odds, overcoming obstacles, and enduring indignities, he keeps going. His goal is to be a stockbroker. In one scene, at his lowest, when he's almost defeated from frustration and discouragement, he says to his son, don't ever let someone tell you that you can't do something, not even me. I'm sharing this with you not to imply transmission repair is hard, but to remind you that sometimes we tell ourselves not to attempt something because we think it's too difficult. You can fix an automatic transmission especially this one. The Ford AODE 4R70W is not hard to work on. In fact, if you've never been inside a transmission, it's one of the friendliest to learn on. The video lessons of this class are divided into two parts. Part one is about an ideal work area, tools you'll use, and model variations followed by transmission disassembly. Part two introduces replacement parts and discusses common failure areas while moving step-by-step -step through the reassembly. The lessons in each part usually last only a few minutes and cover one or two areas of the transmission at a time. This way, you can always find a convenient place to stop for a while and start again later. By the end of the class, we will have dissected, diagnosed, and finally reassembled the entire transmission. If you don't have a work area system of your own, consider duplicating this workspace arrangement. I use two separate areas as you see here. I have the transmission to disassemble on one bench and another larger area to put parts and sub-assemblies on as I remove them from the case. Try to duplicate this separate area as close as you can in your work area because it's important to set parts where they can remain in a logical order without being disturbed. I'm going to flash forward and show you how my benches will look at the end of the teardown. Here's the transmission disassembled and notice the parts and sub-assembly placement. They're arranged neatly and orderly. This is our goal to reach by the end of part one, so keep it in mind as you set up your workspace. Once again, you need a separate area where parts won't be disturbed until you begin the reassembly. Now let's take a look at the tools we'll use during the project. If you think you need a lot of special tools to work on the AODE, well, you're wrong. I will demonstrate a few unique professional tools along the way, but while nice to have, unfortunately they're expensive and can be hard to find. I'll show you how to work without them. Most of the tools used on this transmission are common mechanics tools like you see here. The most exotic tool is an inch pounds torque wrench, which you can rent at the parts store. The rest are common hand tools. We will not use any power tools such as air powered impact guns or ratchets because threads in the bolt holes are aluminum and fragile. Although not absolutely necessary, a source of compressed air and a blow gun can be used to blow dry parts and air check clutch packs. 
I'll use a simple air tank and regulator like this during reassembly in part two. There are two unique tools we'll need and I'll show you how to make them from common materials in later videos. The first is simply a length of steel with holes through it along with a short section of threaded rod and nuts. It's used during teardown and reassembly to depress the one to two accumulator cover and the overdrive servo piston to make snap ring removal and replacement easier. I'll give you the dimensions for making this tool later. The other is a bit more elaborate, but still easy to make. There are two sub-assemblies in this transmission which require the use of a press during disassembly. The forward and direct drums have piston return spring cages that have to be compressed in order to remove retaining snap rings. Professionals use a device like this. It's called a foot press. You place the clutch drum on this pad, adjust the tool like so, and use foot pressure to compress the spring cage enough to remove the snap ring. I don't expect you to have access to this tool. The problem is, it's too expensive to purchase for one project, and I don't think you can rent one. I have a solution. I call it the Squeezomatic. It's an easy to build home brew return spring compressor. We'll make it and then use it a total of four times during this class. At first, it may look a little complicated, but it's a very simple device to fabricate. If you can operate a saw and drill a few holes, you can make it. You'll need about 12 feet of 2 before, 12 3 inch wood screws, and a few long bolts or sections of threaded rod. It'll cost about $12. You can make it in just a few minutes, and I'll show you how in part 2 of the class. It has a 3 to 1 leverage ratio and if you add this threaded rod assembly, it will lock so you can use both hands on snap ring removal. It works just as well as the foot press. Here's another tool you can use, information. The names and physical differences can be confusing, so I want to spend a little time on explanation. The AODE is actually the electronic evolution of its predecessor, the AOD. The AOD, or automatic overdrive, was produced from 1980 through 1991 and was revolutionary when introduced. It had four forward speeds, fourth gear was overdriven, and it had an ingenious input shaft which directly coupled the engine crankshaft to third and fourth gears, bypassing the torque converter for better fuel economy. While very similar to the AODE in many ways, it is not covered in this class. We will work with its electronically controlled descendants, the AODE, 4R70W, 4R75W, 4R70E, and 4R75E. The AODE was produced from 1992 through 1995. The E denotes electronic control. 
It was installed in cars such as the Mustang, Crown Victoria, and Lincoln Town Car, and can be positively identified from information on the case tag. Even though this demonstration model is a 4R70W, there are common visual clues to both, such as the black case connector here, and a case output sensor located here. A conspicuous difference is the extension housing. All AODE transmissions have an extension housing output bushing diameter of 1.5 inches. All 4R70W, 4R75W, 4R70E, and 4R75E transmission extension housings have a larger 1.606 inch diameter bushing for a bigger 1.6 inch drive shaft yoke and have a raised W character cast on both sides. Also note that AODE and 4R70W extension housings, depending on year and vehicle, come in two different lengths. The 4R70W and 4R75W were produced from 1993 through 2003. The characters in the new designation have meaning. 4 means full forward speeds. R means rear wheel drive. 70 refers to input torque capability, roughly 700 foot pounds. W refers to the newer wide spaced gear ratio. These transmissions were installed only in trucks and vans from 1993 until 1995. Like the AODE, the 4R70W can be positively identified from information on this tag. For example, I was told our demonstration transmission is a 4R70W used in a 2001 F-150, which had a 5.4 liter engine, but how can I know for sure? The answer is in the characters 1L3P7000JA on the tag. From research online, I determined the first character one denotes production year 2001. The second and third characters L3 mean light truck or 150 or 250 series truck. The fourth character indicates engineering group. In this case, P means transmission and axle product. The last two letters, JA or LA, indicate 5.4 liter engine. This code format is used on 1998 and later tags. Once again, I use the internet to get this information. There are also physical clues which tell me this is a 4R70W. In addition to having the case connector here, and the output sensor here, the extension housing on two-wheel drive models, as I mentioned before, will have a large W cast into it on its side, and the output bushing will be a larger 1.606 inch diameter. It's interesting to note that the output shaft of the 4R70W is the same as an AODE, but the drive shaft yoke is thicker. The output shaft seal is also larger than the one on the AODE. The difference between the 4R70W and 4R75W is input torque capability. The 4R75W has a hardened heat treated planetary carrier which can handle an additional 50 foot-pounds of torque. The 4R70E and 4R75E were produced from 1994 until about 2010. 
Many internal changes were made and it's immediately recognizable by an additional turbine shaft speed sensor which will be located here in this area. Identifying the variations of this transmission family can be confusing at first, so I hope this short primer helps. One more thing before we get started, remember to protect yourself and work safely. Transmission repair can be dangerous, so make sure your work surface 